Namaste. Morning. Life is too short to be focusing on things that we perceive are our weaknesses, deficiencies, or doubts, and worry about what other people will think about us. I know you hold the gift, you have the potential, and you know in your heart that this gift could be beneficial for everyone. And so don't keep it. I share it. And then when I put up this channel many years ago, yeah, that's my inspiration. Yeah, to be able to teach and share. And not worry about who watches <laughs> and how many. Yeah. I don't even like expect that yeah I will grow a following and I really appreciate your support. All right. I had a teacher but he yeah, left us so soon and he ingrained the seed in us. Yeah. But that seed I grew it myself. Yeah. Of course my students are always my inspiration yeah, to grow my practice at home. And then hopefully, yeah, if you've been following my teachings, yeah, I'm able to help you grow yours as well. So for today, yeah, so just practice. Yeah, practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Some days might be heavy, some days might be light. Yeah. The important part is to do it consistently. Even if you feel like you're heavy, blocked, sad, yeah. Set that distraction aside, roll your mats, and then do it. All right, so start. Yeah. If you have the bolster, you can use that bolster. You can just lie down to the side and then do a light side stretch here. All right, so similar to what we had last time, yeah, using yeah, yeah, props around us to support us. Yeah, you can do here like pillow. Yeah, just place it under. Or you can do the Masakridasana as an alternative. Bending one knee to the side and the other one stretching. Okay? And then here, you stay. Side stretch already. You can rub your shoulders in and out yeah, by turning. Yeah, also, you can extend that bottom arm laterally. Yeah. This shoulder just hang loose. You can turn the head and breathe. Okay, just remain. All right, and then from there, yeah, and just flipping over. So just turn over. So you may start with your upper chest rubbing, and then your arms and the shoulders hang. If you're doing it on the floor, just lay down flat on the floor and then do this with your legs, okay? Good. And then curl higher, higher, higher. Yeah. So the lower back in the chest. If the head is heavy, you can use the hand to cushion your head as you turn your hips. All right. And then just allow it to fall, yeah? The legs may extend and the hips fall. Yeah, and the arms... Yeah, you can go wide, or if this is too heavy for your head, you can use one arm to support your head. And then breathe. Yeah, if you're doing it flat on the ground, yeah, so the alternative is, yeah, if you're lying flat. Keep going the side-to-side -side stretching. It has the same benefit, okay? Now just keep moving the side-to-side. Okay. All right. Beautiful. All right, from there, folding the knees. Oh, yeah. Rolling over one shoulder. And after that, turn and then rolling the opposite. If you're doing it flat, just go to your Garbhasana or the modified yeah, embryo position. Just rubbing and turning and twisting. Opening and circling around. All right. Okay. And then from there, flip over to the other side. So you're just stretching the opposite side. Your bottom arm extends over the head and your top shoulder hangs loose 
past your ear. Okay. Or well, the Masakradasana. Just bending the other knee instead. Okay. Good. If you're doing the Masakradasana, just circle around like this, side to side. And that will essentially stretch yeah, the side body as well. Yeah. All right, and prepare. Yeah, flipping over. Yeah, probably your spine is more open now. Yeah, you can let the head, the shoulders hang loose to the back, and stretch. Like you're doing a morning stretch. If you're doing it flat, yeah, do the same. Stretch nice and long. Yeah, if the head feels heavy, you can lift the head to decompress and you can angle to the side like the shape of the letter C. You can cross the leg there or even lift that leg to rub in and out of the hip joint and the shoulder joints. And applying the lesson about the tongue moving around the mouth and the other way. Yeah, it feels open already, yeah, the spine is open. Like you're ready to do some back bends. Yeah, we're gonna initiate a practice with back bends actually. All right. And from there, just remain in the middle and stretch your spine more. All right, and then just stay. Well, oh, feels good this one. All right, and from there, like you're doing a morning yawn. Good. And then uh, I feel like rubbing again from side to side here. Yeah. I can feel now yeah, the muscles surrounding my spine stretching. Feels good. You know? I'm not too versed with anatomy. I can just describe the sensation to you through my words. As you do this, like you can feel like inner linings there attached to the hip and around you know, the core and then the grooves of the ribs stretching. You can turn and stretch that shoulder, stretch the hip and the other one. All right, good. And then away from the bolster, away from the floor. If you're doing it flat, just place your feet behind you like this. And then you do like a side to side. Or you can use that bolster in the rubbing your joints forward and back. Yeah, rest if you need. Yeah, glide through the joints. Yeah, you can spiral towards the opposite shoulder. As this hip drop, you can even bend the knee, focusing on that hip. And then the other side, let's get this one. Eh? Good. You can curl in and out of that hip bone by moving forward and back, turning and adjusting. All right. And do a child stretch. We, you can keep your feet there on the bolster. That will be the transition side to side. If you're doing it flat, of course, your regular child's position. All right. And from here, come up. Yeah. Keep your feet there, elevated. And then moving up and down like a wave. Yeah. Hips back. Hips forward. Hips back. Up and forward. Good. And you can initiate a yeah, bolster ustrasana. And then just walking your knees here. Open up the heart. Yeah, you can let the head fall lightly backwards. Yeah, and rub the shoulders under. Adjust by yeah, adjusting your knees too. And then free your hands. Right, breathing in. Exhale and wave. Yeah. And reverse. You can rub your toes forward. Okay. Yeah. Feeling open. Yep. Hips back. 
and then up and forward. I see your heart. Yeah, you can initiate the back bend. Yeah, with the hands stretching the neck. With the hang loose. You may just be here for today, adjusting the knees as you move your arms and the arm moves away from the upper back. And that will free the spine more. And probably you can hang loosely to the back. That you can fold and stretch the arms while you're stretching the spine back and forth. And try, release, draw in, up and back, and to the floor behind you. But you can rub the neck from ear to ear and, and then even walk the knees. And remain nice and deep already. All right, with control, come up nice and deep and walk your knees in place. It's just the same element, that's how I grew my practice. Yeah, whereas before I enjoyed lots of like hand standing, the flexion in the transition to the jump and backwards. I still do them, but I incorporated deep opening of the spine. And then this yeah, sequence yeah, forms part of my daily practice. Okay, applying the breath there. All right. And I settle. Yeah. If you notice, even my hands are not symmetrical because our bodies are not perfectly aligned. Yeah, there are differences. And again, going back to our theme, there's nothing wrong with that. You're perfectly just fine. It's just that one part of you is, yeah, I say, more open than the other. Yeah. Well, for me, that's beneficial because through that you will understand the essence of your deep energetic anatomy because through those differences you'll be able to gauge yeah, and then feel the subtleness within. Okay, one leg, you can reach one hand to the back to initiate this arm or this hip opening in and out like you're turning a knob. You can even lift the knee, coil in and out of the joint, come back. And I'll try to reach for the foot already, if it's there, otherwise, no worries at all. It's your self-practice. There's no competition here. All right, loosen. Yeah, you can fold and stretch the arms like the wave. All right. Are you able to see your foot behind you already? No, don't rush. All right. And then you can grab hold of the heel. All right, so this is an advanced variation of the Ekapada Kaputasana because there's no support coming from the foundation of the feet. Yeah. So this will require us yeah, some precision. You can use this foot in adjusting that knee lightly forward and let the head rest. Good. And then up. And then up. Up and up. Whew. Nice and deep. You can tuck your toes there and then rubbing that foot and the knee. Feels good that one. <laughs> like all the heaviness of the body gun. Just imagine the discs of your spine opening, including those normally tight joints, yeah, trap joints around. And then let's flow here before we do the next one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do this. Okay, you can also do alternate leg lift. That's one of my favorite too. As you lift the leg. Yeah, releasing the low back as well. Oh, it feels good. Okay. Level hips. 
Kapatasana. With the bolster. Rub the shoulders around, walking the knees. Wave side to side, loosen if you need. You can even use the hand. All right. Exhaling, inhale. Exhale, loosen, inhale, down. Up, forward and backwards. Yeah, arm bones wrap in so the spine can move upwards. And exhale, you can loosen the neck. And attempt again, waving. All right, exhale. Good. You can use the toes yeah, to grip your hips. And once the hands are there, relax your ankles, right? and then breathing in, you can lightly loosen, you can even inch your knees, all right, and rest your forearms down, but keeping the head free and open. All right, breathing in, breathing out, yeah. All right, come up. Yeah, rubbing the shoulders. And up to your upright kneel. Ooh. Walking the knees, rubbing the shoulders, and marching in place. Good. Inhale, hands down to the back. Now you can do your yeah, flow there. All right, now my dog, and I will do my alternate leg lift. So this is my way of recovering the hip flexors and the legs and the low back after the back bend. All right, and down the knees. It's the other leg. I'll try to accomplish my practice for an hour. Yeah, I can coil in, use the hand, rubbing in and out of the hip and the shoulders. You can lightly bounce up and down there. All right. I feel the hip is up and ready. Spiral inward, coil backwards. Beautiful. Make sure before you do this drill with your foot resting on the bolster, you have that flexibility of the ankle, otherwise this could pulse some health repercussion. So with the bolster, it's actually, I'd say, more sensitive. Because here, you're left with power, you're left with strength and awareness. And up. Good. What I like about the bolster is that your feet and the joints contour. The shape of the bolster, so like you're stretching into the inner linings of your ankle, the toes. Yeah, it takes time. But again, practice will help you attain that awareness. Yeah. Now I'll try now my kaputasana with my feet hanging backwards. And this is even more challenging because you're left just with the strength of the hips and then you won't be able to experience mobility in the knees. So really core strength. And then here I'm using my tongue to draw 
my lower belly in and up. I like Udhira Banda here, a jazz. All right. It's easier to reach for the heels because your feet are higher and then closer to you, but without awareness of the core, you can hurt your knees doing this. But it serves me as I have the openness already. Oh, nice and deep. Down the hips. Not so much of the spine. Right. Quadricep, thighs. All right, and up. Ooh, quads, have flexes. And the brain is really expanding. Walking those knees. Oh, and that was deep. Okay, flowing. Alternate the leg left. And this alternate leg left helps us release the knee joints too. And the shoulder. Okay. And just flow limply down, rubbing forward and back. Okay, and I'll try to do one without the bolster. I'll do them one after the other, like about a cup of tassana. Ripping the midline, hang loose. Yeah, if you need to adjust, why not? You know your body more than anyone else. No one will take it against you if you loosen a bit, so you can open. Good. And into the back. Rest a moment. Sometimes I will linger here because when the body is up, you can refine the experience. I feel like just doing it with my elbow slightly up. Oh, it feels good here. All right, and finally down the floor. And up. All right, and up. Ooh. <laughs> like I can pull in and out of the hip joint there. And sign. Right. And then my mat is moving too, which means I'm using foundation, which is good. All right, and the other one. Waving. You can also grab outside the foot so the shoulders can open more. Okay. And release. You can let the arm bone open. Okay. And up. And all the way up. Knees walk. Side to side, circle around. Okay. You're probably so used to me doing my mouth adjustment, or at first you might find it weird, but now probably you're feeling the sensitivity of your mouth already. Draw 
in from the core. In, see, in, if you notice, I'm not pushing forward, but rather I'm sliding backwards so I can open high and longer. Like the lower back lengthens and the upper back hangs. Beautiful. No pressure, no pain, no struggle, just openness and lightness. Okay. And to the floor. And breathe. Okay, up. And release the posture. Okay, walking and rubbing. Brain is blinking. Okay, squeezing. Okay, down the floor. And away from the floor. All right, alternate leg left. So this is how I do my practice. If I only have, for example, one hour to spare, and still attain those deeper ones. But then again, it doesn't happen overnight. I've worked many years. And if you look back and search to the lessons I posted many years ago, you probably notice the transition. Yeah. Good. Bad rasana. Okay. If you're new to this channel, you probably might find it weird. I use my tongue a lot in gaining access to my lower internal cavities because the tongue, once the energetic body is open, yeah, they can coil in and they pierce through the linings of the hips and the shoulders and the collarbone and even the brain inside, and even the breath becomes organic. You will just realize that you're doing yeah, the breathing exercise stated in the books without you actually learning them because <laughs> your energy body teaches you. And that's your inner teacher. Yeah. I call that, I call that the bandas. Yeah those subtle like valves inside you reutilize to gain access to the previously dormant centers but as the body opens you'll be able to tap their potentials Okay. Padrasana. I always find my mat is running away when I practice. I guess I do lots of rubbing around. Okay. You can just do this actually. I'm just progressing to a deeper one. Oh, I could feel, I could hear the nada down this part of my brain. Like it's blinking. Okay. So less forceful, less muscular, more openness. OK. 
Again, I feel like reaching for my hands at the back. I can rub the side body. All right. More here. Okay. Release. Andokasana. Body up. And body back. Yeah, alternate legs. Okay. I'll sit through. Okay. Binding. We just adjust my wires. Okay. You can just lie down on your back without you binding the arms. Yep. But I'm doing this for today. Okay. I can open my upper chest more. Good curling to one side, rubbing through the shoulder. All right, and this at all feels good, this one. It's like isolated thoracic extension. And the shoulder as well. Breathe. All right, beautiful. All right, I'm crossing, releasing, circle around, right, and I'll do side to side here. Yeah, lifting one leg up and stretch that opposite arm. Again, yeah. sway that leg up and around to stretch the side body. Bouncing that leg up and down. Bending and stretching. Okay. Supta Kandasana. Settle a moment. And the other way. Breathe through it. All right. Lightly arch this side. This is my hollow side. All right. Whew. <laughs> it's deep. It's like you can, like gears inside, turning and coiling around. Yeah. Externally it looks painful, but for me, this is my way of decompressing and releasing the heaviness of my body, actually. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Not a beginner's practice. And I do this to release yeah, further blockages, clogging. My sacrolumbar region. All right. Pin down. And then sitting. Okay. Alternate the leg left. Lift and stretch. Okay, and the other one. And flowing forward to the floor. Away from the floor. And behind us. 
Okay, I feel this shoulder is still tight. So let me do another one. The other one is crossing on top. Binding, twisting. And circling around. Sometimes I slide my elbows further under. Because I feel by doing that I can open a little bit more from my shoulder joint and my chest. Yeah. You can move in and out of the hips. Good. And then the subtle your head might be opening, favoring one side. You can stretch the collarbone. Oh, feels good. And the other one. And then find the center. All right, you can let the head fall to deepen the stretch in your chest. All right, and cross. Yeah, a few of this. And the tongue, yeah, rubbing that side of the cheek, the upper lip. You're like an animal. <laughs> I'm like an animal coiling, rubbing in and out. All joints and body parts are interconnected. As one side turns out, the other one coils the other way. And the tongue and the mouth being the pathway, the biggest of the orifices. <laughs> you can gain access through those inner pockets. Yeah. Think about that the body like a tube. And the mouth is wide, the biggest of those like endings. Yeah, we have many opening that mouth being the biggest one. You can really irrigate yeah those inner channels and the mouth and the tongue is like the yeah the main yeah, gear, yeah, flowing through those internal cavities. Okay, circle around here. Okay, sitting kandasana. And I'll do Kachari Mudra here. And sometimes I would just be conscious that my arms are not perfectly aligned. One is turning down, the other one is protruding out. Those are like internal kriyas happening spontaneously as you channel the energy. This is the mudra part already. <laughs> Adjusting. And lifting. Magnetize the eyes. Like a hypnotic experience. Now breathing through it. All right, over the head. To the floor behind this, you can reach, keeping the spine long by pointing your tail towards the back. So you're bending at the hip and not through the spine. All right. And slowly down. 
Kowak. Yeah. Soften. And a few of this to decompress. And release the effect of the mudra. You may feel like you're in the zone already. Especially this sequence that I'm sharing with you. It's not just asana, I tell you. Yes, we're working through the asanas, but these are mudras, energy channeling techniques. And up and down. And the other one. All right. Breathe. Sitting. Yeah, sometimes I just wanted to observe. Hmm. All right. Crossing the legs. Badapadmasana. That shoulder, yeah. so you can open the side body, the collarbone, and rubbing. Okay, side to side, coiling in and out, rubbing the hip back and forth. Sitting Gandasana. Beautiful. All right, release. Yeah. You might move from hip to hip. Okay. Lying on the back. Yeah, if you like doing side stretch. Okay, and the other one. Viparita again. Yeah, I do the elements twice. Yeah, or more than twice, because the first one is like your body is just adjusting and adapting. And by doing it again, you can experience some deeper realms. Sometimes I crisscross that. All right, and to the floor. Okay, and side to side. Sit. Okay. Badapadmasana, other side. Mm. 
Okay. okay. Release. Reaching over. As I breathe through it, like I'm piercing the spot down all the way to the hips. Yeah, Plavini Pranayama is one mysterious pranayama in Hatha Yoga because the mention of it is just like, if not just a few lines. Yeah. Breathe by gulping the breath like you're swallowing it and down the hips. Yeah, Pavini means to float. Yeah, and the hips, the Swadishtana chakra is associated with water and that makes us light. And I didn't re I didn't I was doing it already and I didn't know that there's actually a name for it. I, I've been doing it for years already as I feel the need for you know drawing the breath from that pot and all the way there, it could feel the nadis. Then later on, yeah, I realized there's actually a name for it. And then when you read the text, it's like gulping. How can you gulp the breath? How can you swallow the breath? No, you're not actually swallowing it. Yeah, you use the mouth, yeah. But in the future, well, you can also do it through the nose. and rub the tongue around them. Beautiful. All right. Release. Ah, nice and deep. Okay. And alternate three like a dog we're done i'm gonna end this practice with mobility and dynamism and flowing up and down good and then sitting through let me adjust Mm, right, and then circling around, and side to side, lift and stretch. Uh, one leg. All right, and saying that leg. <laughs> To open the pot and sitting down a dog, alternate, even that hand. Notice, okay, arm balancing. Yeah. First, I'll try and jump it up and yeah, make sure I have that space around me. Okay, I'll try again. And I'll try again. Yeah, that's a practice. If it doesn't happen in one go, try again, try again, try again, try again. <laughs> yeah. And 
you're gonna get it <laughs> and lose it try it again <laughs> yeah who cares it's your practice but try again uh, I guess I'm I'm doing different techniques in trying to press yeah because normally I would just use my tongue but now I'm different I'm doing a different way of gaining access like the Plavini and up and then you're gonna get it once you've found it you won't lose it anymore you're just changing your method and down the floor good with the plavini pranayama it's very light that once you're there it's so light you will lose some of the balance but it's good because you're training your brain to you know, practice the same method using a different breathing pattern okay alternate leg lift okay and this next one i'll press through it yeah i'm trying to like go to the back of my mouth as i scoop my hips under and i'm using my tongue in lifting myself up all right and touch the ground yes alternate the leg left Okay, and to the floor, we sit, our hips down, and to the floor, we rest, our spine loose. Okay. That's non stop activity, your breathing. Your body is brimming already. <laughs> All right. And for a moment, we just allow the body to settle. awaken I can angle one side kicking and the other side and a bit of a sway
Mm, okay. Mm, yep. And sitting. And flowing. Good. Yeah, very asana intensive, but it's more than asana, as I've mentioned. Yeah. And you feel it, yeah? You feel the magnetizing effect of the practice. Like you go through this yeah, trance-like state. Okay, inhale. Exhaling. Find your breath. All right, all the way up. Good, and the hands together to the heart. They rest. Yeah, namaste, namaste. Thank you for joining me yet again. Till the next one. Bye.